Well, I wish I could give you the tea, but mine's just a little bit tart, and that's why it's called Leah's Lemonade. And I'm really excited to have Black History. You know it's Black History Month, right? And we got a little bit of soap opera Black History in the house today. Lamont Archie, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first and foremost, before we even get started, I got to ask all the parents out there, because I know we're almost a year into quarantine. Are you okay? Are you surviving? Uh, you know, well, I'm, I'm still standing, but you know, it, it is mentally taxing. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. It is mentally. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I would, you, I would say the first, probably the first two months were, were the worst. That's when, you know, we were just really trying to get a hold of everything that was going on and, and deal with the internet, deal with the, these computers and deal with the kids and deal with the teachers it was a lot, but now I think, you know, they've got a hold on it. So it, it's kind of taken the stress off of, uh, off of the parents, off myself. So we're making it, we're, we're making Surviving. it. So, you know, one of the things that I think that 2020, this pandemic, everything has kind of forced us all to do. We've all had a lot of time to sit with ourselves. And um, what do you think that has been, I watched an interview with you where you had said a couple of weeks ago that you're trying to work on being a better person. So what do you think that this quiet time in 2020, I know you've still been working, but like, what are some things that you've learned about yourself that you really want to enhance or work on that maybe you probably wouldn't have had a second to think about if it wasn't for the pandemic? Um, you know what? It's working on um, things regarding myself. Um, to be honest, relationships with um, just just working on myself regarding being in a relationship. You know, during this time off, I've had time to just really, you know, been able to focus on myself and, and just really take light of things that I that I do right, things that I do wrong. And just looking, um, looking into bettering myself uh, to become a better man for my children, yeah. and just to be, you become a, a better man for a woman, and just you know, all around, you know, it, it's just really been uh, a, a time where you know a lot of us have had that moment, uh, that long moment to sit with ourselves yeah. and not really have as many distractions and, and, and things going on in life and just that time to focus and and really take light of what's right and what's wrong right so hopefully right. that answers well yeah and you know i think the reality is is due to the distractions due to our phones due to work due to the way that life was operating pre-covid um a lot of us really never had real time to sit with ourselves and a lot of people found out during yeah. the time that they didn't like to sit with themselves so i think you know it was a real reflective time to like dig deep and figure out like who, who am I, right, without everything else? And then, like, let me assess that and figure out where I'm going with that, you know? Very true. And that, that time that, you know, that we spend with ourselves, what are, what are we doing? Are we just using that time on social media? Right. Or are we using that time productive? And if we are just using it on, on meaningless things, what should we really be using it on? You know, it's, it's things like that, you know, just have to you know, take a, take a wide look at what's going on, the wide picture, and, and see what needs to be fixed. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about it. Uh, in fifth grade, you wanted to work in a zoo with animals, and today <laughs> you are an actor. Um, let's talk about, you know, your journey. I know about it, but, I mean, you went from thinking that you were going to possibly work at a zoo to being on the CW every week and on, you know, soap operas. So let's talk about it. <laughs> Yeah, I've always been uh, an animal lover. I've always, I grew up always wanting a dog, but I could never get one. Um, we're living in apartments that didn't allow dogs, uh, which didn't matter to me. I still wanted, still wanted the dog, but I never got, I still want a dog, um, you know, but uh, I just developed a love for animals throughout those years of like wanting and yearning for a, uh, for a pet. Uh, my grandfather was, he always watched National Geographic. So that's kind of, you know, I, I did grasp, grasp some of that, um, that love for wild animals through him and sitting back watching National Geographic with him. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would, you know, definitely say it's, it's came from my upbringing. And now I am 
no longer working with animals because I did work as a veterinarian technician for uh, 10 years or more. Um, so, you know, I, I did hold on to that, to that dream and, and I did pursue it right. to, uh, to some extent. Yeah. You, you got it, but you definitely veered the other way. I don't think you could have told yeah. five-year-old you that you'd be like doing what you do now. Right. Like, which is kind of cool. Um, Not at all. But I mean, you've actually done quite a lot to like be where you are. I mean, you were a carpenter, uh, model, mm-hmm. <laughs> actor. So mm-hmm. What do you think like has been the biggest lessons of kind of going into all these career paths? Because I think, you know, we kind of, the American dream, right, is kind of built on this idea that we all do this one thing, you do it real well, you get rich, you get the family. But I mean, we all know life's not like that, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what, just trust trust the path, you know, do what... Do what do what feels good. Do what do what you feel is right. I mean, listen, acting and, and modeling was two of the furthest furthest things in my mind of what I wanted to do. It it, it actually came to me, and um, I would say be open, you know, to to things that are foreign to you, because those things that that are brought to you, you know, may be exactly what you've actually been looking for without even knowing. You know, don't block any blessings. And yes, don't block any blessings because honestly, I could have easily been said, I could have easily said, you know what? That's not me. I'm cool. Yeah, I can make some money doing it, but you know, I, I'm, I want to do something else, but I was open, you know? So yeah, don't, don't block any blessings and, and, and try new things. Yeah. So, okay. Take me on this journey. So you, you move out to LA um, you're at a job fair. Now, this is the part that I, I'm, I'm very interested in. So you're at a job fair. Someone uh, scouts you out to be a model. This job fair, what, what, what kind of job were you going to look for? Because I know you did not expect to walk out being a, a damn model. Not at all. To be honest, I didn't even really want to go to the job fair. <laughs> I think it was, my, it was probably my mom or my uncle. They were like, oh, you, you know, you need a job. You haven't found one yet. You've been in L.A. for a little bit. They're having a job fair. I'm sure they found it for me and was like, go to this job fair. And so I didn't have I had no clue what I was walking into. I had no I, no clue, you know, what companies were going to be there. I was just showing up, just seeing what was going to happen. And um yeah, I got scouted. A, a, a woman came up to me and asked me, did a model? I told her no. Uh, and I told her that I wasn't interested, to be honest. Wow. Um, so that was, you know, that was a learning lesson for me. But she, uh, she said, she was like, okay, look, I, I understand you don't want to do this, but I have a guy who's a manager. It wouldn't hurt just to meet him. So I did take that opportunity to meet with him. And then I ended up, you know, taking the journey. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was just there with without a clue of anything in particular that I was looking for, I was just looking for a job, a J O B. And then God said, "Blue, <laughs> slap." Yeah, exactly, here. exactly. That's that's yep. actually incredible. But I think that also goes back to like your your passions will find you. Back to what you said, like full circle. Like what your what your purpose is yep. will always align. Even sometimes. Yep straying away from it so that's a super dope story so yep. we go into modeling and then we start acting and we do soap operas now i will say this my family is the cult uh following of they know and and they have made me so anti-soap opera because i can just hear the music in my head yeah. when I, it. I wanted to come home and watch pbs and i hear like the, the freaking theme song i'm like oh god but there You're is the same following out there. Yes. You're the same as me because when I was growing up, I would come home and my grandmother, she would watch all my children. Mm-hmm. And I would hate it. Hate I mean, it. as I hear it, whoop, I go to another room. Yep. That's the last thing I wanted to watch. The yep. last thing I wanted to watch. Um, but I remember, you know, they, they, they had a cult following and still do. And yep. for many, many years, days has been on for 55 years. So well before we were even thought of. Before we even thought of, and I just, I mean, and so I saw an interview that you did and you said that you guys do two minimum to, to five episodes harshly in one day. That's like a typical day on set for a summer. We, 
Well, on average, I mean, we they could shoot, you know, three different episodes. But the thing is, they're not shooting the entire episode. They're okay. shooting different scenes from different episodes. So, but, I mean, I listen, I can go to work. I, I think tomorrow when I go to work, I'm shooting, like, nine, ten scenes. So it's much, it's much different. So, right. Okay. So, obviously, like, that was one of your first jobs. So how does – well, the first time you were playing one role, right? The first time you ever did a soap opera, right? So it was it was pretty yeah easy. just now quick after, just quick I went in there. Now like how do you compartmentalize? Because I just can't imagine like doing a super dramatic and then like a regular and then an angry like how do you even get your mindset? Because I know like acting takes your emotions and your body and your skills. So how does that work? Mm, it's a good question. It's 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 acting. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it besides you just act. You you just have to be able to. Place yourself in the, whatever situation you need to be, snap into the character and be able to, from that, from that point, be able to move it into to something else. You know, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's just part of learning the craft. I mean, yeah. being at a soap, we do work so fast, yeah. you know, so we do have to, we could listen, we could be portraying, getting in a car crash and then. 10 minutes later, we're in another scene and, you know, we're making love because that's a different yeah. episode. Right. So it, you really have to just act and do what you're, you're, you know, you're in front of the camera to do. That's insanity to me. How do you remember your lines? I always wonder this because like when you're doing that much, like how do you not forget? <laughs> yeah, it, it, listen, that definitely took a while to, 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 to work right. that, to work that muscle memory in the brain. I, I always say it's, it's like up. a muscle. I know lie. I, I do that sometimes. <laughs> I do that sometimes. I definitely do that sometimes. Do they roll with it? And it works. You know, some, <laughs> some, sometimes they roll with it. Sometimes they stop. It depends how close you are to what's written. To the line. So I, if I forget the line, I try to stay at least somewhat close to what I think is written. But it's like, it's like a muscle, you know, the more you work at it, the more time you spend memorizing things, you develop a, a, a stronger muscle, a stronger brain um, to, to memorize lines. So right as of now, I mean, I've been doing it for a while, so it doesn't take long for me to memorize some things, but don't get it twisted. I still can forget some stuff quick. Quick. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not perfect and flawless. Okay, right. I can forget. They're doing episode six and you are episode 16. Like, <laughs> mind is just everything. All that. All yeah. that. And exactly. listen, I, I would make shit up and run with it. Don't don't let me go, because I... <laughs> we, we would be fine. <laughs> but, you know, and I, one thing I've always wanted to know, too, this is something that I've always been interested in. When you all shoot these, because I, you know, again, from someone who is not a soap opera watcher, Everything seems so dramatic. Is there a different way that you act compared to like All American compared to, you know, Days of Our Lives or Young and the Restless? Or is it the same thing? It's just the editing that makes it seem more dramatic. No, it's to me, it's a it's a little different. I mean, being that it's shot so fast, I mean, we're literally given one rehearsal and then we shoot. We do, we do the take. So we, do, we literally get one take to, to get it right. So I would say, you know, it, it, you just, you, you lose that time to really be able to dive deeper into the character and, and, and really kind of maneuver and find out what really works for you as an actor. You kind of just have to, you know, be on point and, and stick it right, you know, right off the bat. Um, but I mean, I, I wouldn't, th there is some times where, you know, it's a little over the top, you know, if you've got, if you're working with people that are, you know, that are over the top, you don't want to play it too real because then it's, it looks like you're doing less, mm. you know, so it looks like you're lacking. So, I mean, it, it's hard to say, I mean, I, I won't say it's like, you know, I get on there and I put on a, a total show or I'm a completely different person, uh, um, right. as an actor, but you know, I, I think each role just requires something a little different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, like I said earlier, when I did the intro, Black History Month, I mean, you are 
a part of Black history and, and soap operas being a part of the union, the first Black union on Days of Our Lives. So how was that? Like, what what was it just like you read the script and it was like, oh, okay, or you knew like the impact of what was really happening? We, uh, Sal Stowers and I, she plays my wife on uh, on the show. We were the first African-American couple to get married on the show right. uh, in, in 55 years. So um, we actually didn't know it until, you know, being on Twitter and just, you know, seeing some of the, uh, the things that the fans were saying. So that's, that's actually how we found out is yeah. through the fans. Yeah. So um, it's something, you know, that we were blessed to be, you know, a part of, but at the same time, it's a little sad, you know, 50, 54 years or whatnot. And there was, there was no African-American marriages uh, on the show, but you know, um, times are changing. Things are getting, you know, a little bit better. We're still pushing for change and uh, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll see full circle um, better things to come and, and, and full, full change. Yeah, well, and that that goes back to the point I said earlier, like, Black people love soap operas, and especially older Black people, so I was, like, super surprised that this was the first, but when you think about it, or when I think about my recollection, I don't remember seeing a lot of Black faces on those shows, so it is nice that, you know, we are starting to see diversity in these type of shows, especially with the cult following being with Black people. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. I definitely agree. Okay, so we got to go through the career. And of course, we have to talk about the fact that Beyonce thought you were fine enough to make her her love interest and cater to you. Um, So I've heard the story that you said the people told you you were supposed to be somebody else's love interest, but then Beyonce picked you. Um, You know, listen, I know that I know you tell your kids that. that's, That's something you tell your kids, right? Like Beyonce picked daddy. Beyonce picked me. I'll tell you know I'll tell them when they're older. It's funny that you mentioned that because well it might have been last night or the night before. Um, my daughter she watches music videos. She's she's into that, but it's more so like the the Justin Bieber and the uh, um, Taylor Swift and you yeah. know that the the young stuff, right? Yeah. So I, I I she's in the videos and I was like, oh, dad was in a video and she was like, oh, can I see you? And I was like, do you know who Beyonce is? She didn't know who Beyonce was. Is it? Am I? Am I a bad father? For judging, that? No, I'm judging. I'm judging you as a parent. We talking about you, Black History, and you don't know who Beyonce. Lamar, what the hell? Yeah, I know it's so bad. We gotta it's have so a couple bad, of right? Oh, yeah, man. they were like, no, we don't know. So okay, but but listen. So I'm showing the video, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm in the video towards the end, and maybe just like a quick little flash is in there, right? So they're just like, mm, can we just fast forward to where you are? They did not know. care anything, like nothing. They did not care. And at the beginning of the video, Beyonce, uh, Michelle, and um, Kelly. Oh my God, uh, Kelly. They're all naked, right? So my 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 son's looking. He was like, "Ugh, why are they just all naked? Turn this off." Oh God, uh, you know it was it was. It was a sight to see for any for everyone else, and I'm sitting there. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what have I done? <laughs> kids will humble the hell out of you. I love it. Like your kids don't care who you are, yeah. what you do for a day job. It's like, oh, dad, you were with some lady named Beyonce. Cool. Like mm. they care less. Care less. Yeah. I love it. Well, I mean, and what a story to tell. There, there. One day they will be like, holy shit, my dad was the yeah. Lady. For Beyonce, like it's it's gonna click. It's gonna. So when the day comes, yeah. Listen, I didn't know who Anita. I didn't know who Anita Baker was until I was, you know, probably a teenager. So when they get that age, maybe they'll care. <laughs> Anita Baker and Beyonce are comparable. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Anita <laughs> Baker, Anita Baker, Anita Baker to me is everything. I now I get it, but to me, Anita Baker. That's that's my favorite. That's, your girl? that's, that's my girl. That that's my girl, Nita Baker. That's that's it for sweet me. Sweet love, sweet love. <laughs> I feel you. I feel <laughs> that's you, my man. angel. Okay, okay, okay. Got you, got you. Yeah, we gonna, we gonna get it. Okay, so the dad, their daddy was a little slow to his love, so we'll let them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To catch up. Mm-hmm. We we see what they were with. We'll Speaking get it. Of, yeah. Speaking of your kids, though, how do you think that fatherhood has changed you as a person? 
it's definitely gonna be more patient. Um, mm. It's definitely um, brought a um, a side of, uh, of of empathy, which I still work on. Um, out of me, just being more sympathetic. You know, um, just growing up was you know I was much more. I was raised to you know be tough. You know mm. in that whole thing. So. I had that, you know, and, and especially having a daughter, it's, it's, it's softened up, which is good because, you know, I, I wouldn't want my kids to, you know, tuck their feelings, you know, you know, uh, uh, or, or sweep their feelings under the rug and, and things like that. So I'm learning to open up and, and help them as, as best as I can. So it's a learning process for, for myself as well. That's also goes into you know, bettering myself. So I better my, you know, better myself. So I'm a better father for, for them as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely opened me up. Sure. Yeah. You know, I was having a conversation um, with a friend about therapy and like black men and just like the way that uh, we internalize. And I think, you know, our generation is the generation that's going to stop the, the curse of the stop crying, boy, you're a boy, stop crying. Um, and there's like this fine line mm -hmm. for that. Right. Um, but, you know, I was talking to him and I said, well, so you guys know better, but how hard is it to do better? Right. Because you've been conditioned, but you know better. And there's a balance, yeah. a really intricate balance and it's hard um, to live out, right? Because you've been molded to a certain extent to, into adulthood by these like conditions yeah. or social norms. But then you also know that you don't want to raise your kids in that way. Exactly. Yeah. And just like you said, uh, don't cry. You know, mm -hmm. that, that was me. You know, that yeah. was definitely me. Like anytime, oh, don't let nobody see you cry. You know, that's, that's, that's not man like, you know. Right. And, having kids, I wouldn't want them to feel like that. It's, it's good to let out your emotions yeah. and, and, and things really release from you. So mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that, that's, you know, definitely one of the things I'm, I'm working on and um, they've opened me up to as well, because without them, I would have still been that same person and would have not even be thinking about working on things like that. Mm, yeah that's dope that's really dope were you one of those people because obviously you're attractive were you one of those people who was like because you weren't trying to be a model someone found you to be a model so were you very self-absorbed or no like you your like attractiveness never really you never thought about it yeah you know it, it's never something that it's it was never something that I focused on or or, or used or mm -hmm. anything like that I you know I remember in high school I was really shy but because, you know, people thought that I was handsome, they immediately thought that I was stuck up. Mm -hmm. But I just, you know, I was just shy. I just didn't really know what to do to people. You know, and I, I've always been, you know, kind of, Reserved. I'll say standoffish, but it's it's only for the simple fact that, you know, I, I've just never been a, a real people person. It's something that I've had to work on as an adult. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, it was it was definitely never anything that I, I I used or or felt that you know because I am a, a, a someone that's handsome I deserve or mm -hmm. you know I, I I think I should get this or, or things like that no it was that was never never me and still isn't me yeah because I mean like obviously you work in Hollywood you you know the people who have that aura there are there are plenty of people who feel that way so I but you can I can read your energy very well and tell that you're not like again it's a certain aura you don't give that off so I always wondered especially when you because you were not like oh I want to be a model you just happened it landed in your lap so I was just interested to yeah see, like what that means because for everybody that means something different like being attracted to some people is literally all that they have yeah, no, 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 no. That listen, looks fade, like that. You know, it, I mean, anything could happen. Anything could happen. You know, so it, it's that just flying by in life based on looks is probably the last thing uh, that that I would. The last thing anyone should do is to bank just on being handsome because or or pretty because it ain't gonna last. We all get old. Okay, something's gonna drop and sloop. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and and you can spend that time and that money in a uh, with a surgeon. You are gonna start looking like a cat pretty soon. So either way, you ain't gonna look handsome or pretty no more. Okay, get into it. Get into it. Okay, so this is an interesting question, but this is something I thought of. What is something that you swore 
that you would never do as a parent that you found yourself doing? Because I think all people have that who have kids. It's like, oh, I would never do that when you don't have a kid. And then now that you have a kid, you're like, oh, shit, I'm doing it. That's a very good question. Um, probably like put on makeup. I, I would think when I say when I when I say makeup, of course, I wear makeup for work, right? Right, right. But like to sit there, like let your daughter like put makeup on you, like mm -hmm. women, like mm -hmm. eyeshadow and and colors and blush and things like that. That would definitely be. It. Listen, if you'd have told me back in the day, like, oh, you know, you'll just walk around the house and make, never, never. <laughs> But having kids, you, know, you got you to please the little ones. So, yeah, mm -hmm. a little blush, yes. a little, little eyeshadow. Come on, girl, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> we love to see it. We love to see it. That's, that's amazing. Okay. Yep. So, you're on the season of All American. Um, how are you enjoying that ride? Playing, playing a little bit of a, a villain, if you'll say. Um, yeah. Obviously different yeah. from your beloved character in, in your soap opera world. So, like, how are you enjoying that that role and kind of switching it up? I'm having a lot of fun. So much fun. Just because I, I get to do something that's completely different than, uh, than the character that I play on days. Um, it, it, it's great being around my people, you know, uh, it, it's it's great to there we go. It's great to um, switch up the environment. Everyone over there is so nice and and, and welcoming. Uh, it's been great. Uh, Karima's been great. I mean, it's it's really for me to to be a reoccurring character on there and to show up and just to feel like I'm 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 a part of the squad. It really feels good, and they they've definitely welcomed me. So I'm ha I'm having a good time. Definitely. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I love I love the the feeling, the embracing of, of being around your people. Um, and speaking of your people, yeah. who do you want to work with in the future? Like, who are some people, like, that are on your list that you're like, before I die, I want to work with these folks? Well, of course, I'm, I'm going to go with, with the great Denzel Washington. Okay, okay. Of course, okay. you know, yeah. Uh, he is for sure someone that, you know, I look up to and, um, as an actor. Um, another person I would say, um, Samuel L. Jackson, you know, he's yeah. someone that constantly stays busy and, and, you know, has dedicated his life to his craft and just someone I look up to as well. So yeah, let, let's, let's put those two, Samuel L. Jackson and, um, and Denzel Washington. I could, I could go on and on, but let's, let's stick okay. to those two just to, to start Time too. And, you know, speaking of the future, what can we expect? I know I've heard through the grapevine you've been writing things and pitching things, comedies and a drama, correct? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, with my partner, I created a, a comedy film. So we're, neither of us write comedy, but mm -hmm. we have a, a great, a great film that um, we're currently shopping for a, a comedy write for. And then we also created a, a drama, a drama film, which is already written. Um, we have spoke to some production companies that are interested. So right now we're we are looking to add a, a named actor to the uh, to the film. And you know, it's 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 a lot. You know, it's 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 kind of like there's a long road. There's 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 ups and downs, just like there was for me in front of the camera. It's like it's, there's yeah. the same thing behind the camera, but everything you know works in the right time. You know, it, yeah. it doesn't always happen when I want it to happen. You know, and, and that's just the way life is. You know, timing is everything. So I'm not worried. You know, when the time is right, you know, things are gonna happen. Uh, films will get picked up, and you know, I'll look back on these times these times where I'm talking to you about it, like, oh, you know, hasn't happened yet, but it'll come and I'll look back yeah. on these times and I'll, and I'll be grateful for them. And, I, and when I get there, I'll be able to look back and say, uh, you know, I appreciate what it took to get to, you know, where I, where, where I will be then. Yeah. Ultimately, like, are you wanting to transition eventually off camera to do more behind the scenes, like writing and directing and producing, or do you love both equally and want to do both throughout your career? Yeah, no, I love both equally. Um, as far as directing or producing that, you know, hasn't been anything that I've taken liking to yet or, or have dabbled in yet. So I, I don't know, maybe that, you know, maybe the love for that could come down the line, but as of right now is it's more so creating 
um, creating films, uh, creating ideas, and, and, and being an actor. Those are the two things that, you know, really have uh, my attention and something that I've been, you know, spending the most time working on as of right now. But who knows what the future may bring. Okay. Well, listen, I'm excited to see you're killing it. Um, you know, in the soap opera sphere, my family is yelling all the way back from Texas right now because, um, like I said, they are cult followers. And they also watch All American, too. So it's a two for one. Um, okay. But, uh, nice. Last question, because I was just wondering this. Where, what is the origin of your name, Lamont? Where does that come from? It's, it's French. Mm-hmm. It's French. Lamont. I have no idea why I, I got a French name. My middle name is Dijon, which is French as well. I have no idea what's Wait. going on, but it was given to me and I've had to take it. I don't know. I do not know. And, and your mother nor your father is French? Exactly. <laughs> Neither. What? Neither. Uh, uh, what, Listen, what, what, what you, you know black people, we be... <laughs> huh? What's your mama's name? What's your mama's name? Just the Rhonda, first name. Rhonda. So Rhonda gonna name you Rhonda. Lamont. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so we can come up with some stuff, can't we? <laughs> they said my baby gonna be French, okay? Dijon. Oh, they, yeah. they, threw, they threw some yeah. sauce in there for you, honey. They threw some sauce in there. Yeah. And, I was, and you know, it's funny when I was, when I was doing my research, I was like, I really want to say it French, but let me not be a Negro. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on here being real extra. And you'd be like, <laughs> Max, that's not my name. So I'm like, just yep. say no, it's listen. American because. Yeah. Well, wow. I, I stay correct with people. I stay correcting people. But, you know, I, the name I usually get most is Lamont. I've, I've almost taken that on as a, as a nickname because it's, it's so, I get it so often. And even when I correct people, they still go back to that. So I'm just like, you know, it is what it is. Unless I'm going to see you every day, then I'm going to let you know. No, you better correct them because people can say Spuncture Myers <laughs> and Oscar Meyer Wieners and all types of stuff <laughs> like that. They say Lamont. <laughs> Lamont, Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it exactly. It's black exactly. It's not doing that no more. They're going to say your name correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's on period. Anyway, listen, I'm not going to keep you the rest of the night, but I really do thank you for joining me at the Lemonade Stand tonight. I uh, really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, everybody, grab a cup, throw it back, and uh, sip on all of that. <laughs>